everyone. <laughs> uh, feel free to drop a comment uh, in the comments here just to make sure that you can hear me okay um, as I'm coming at you uh, live from the ice. Uh, sounds good? Not sure yet. Okay. I do have a friend with me tonight behind the camera. Um, she will be uh, reading out comments uh, that you have uh, and I will be answering them uh, along the way. Any comments yet for audio? Audio is good. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Pam Stewart and I have been partnered with Cabal's Canada for almost a year now and I am coming at you live from the ice tonight uh, to go over my entire setup of everything that I use to target uh, walleye and panfish. Um, so first and foremost I want to talk about uh, ice safety. Um, I'm currently on a lake uh, near Ottawa, Ontario, and we have had a lot warmer uh, winters so far this year. Um, so in terms of ice safety conditions, I usually pay attention to the weather leading up to even going and thinking about checking the ice. Um, but first and foremost, I always make sure that I have my Striker Brands flotation suit on me. Um, it's just an extra peace of mind in case I'm going to a lake that I'm not familiar with and you know there could be some springs in the area or some high current areas. Um, so it's just an extra peace of mind in case something were to happen. Uh, having said that, I always make sure I have a spud with me and I spud my way uh, out to where I want to go. Um, currently I'm on 12 inches of ice and I actually messaged a couple anglers um, that fish this lake in this exact area leading up to this event just to make sure that there was enough safe ice and there's actually a community of huts, uh, permanent shacks uh, not far from here and they're using side-by-sides to tow out their shacks so uh, and I was here last week checking out the ice conditions as well so uh, it is uh, super safe. Um, next thing I want to talk about uh, for ice safety is um, I always make sure that I have um, my uh, cleats. Um, we are currently on uh, snow covered uh, ice right now, but I always make sure that I have my cleats just to make sure that as I'm walking, um, I'm not gonna slip and fall uh, on the ice. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I always make sure I have my floater suit, um, but, uh, in terms of that, um, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, ice safety. Um, like I said, I did message anglers uh, before coming out here and they advised me that the ice was completely safe on top of checking it out uh, myself. Um, from there, uh, I briefly wanna touch base on uh, fish online. Um, I actually did a seminar at Cabela's on the weekend and I asked the audience if they were familiar with Fish Online and nobody there was. So Fish Online is a really neat online uh, free website that you can use to search any water body in Ontario. You can also use it to search uh, by species. So for instance, if I wanted to go to a new lake and target walleye, I can search walleye and it'll show up all of the lakes within a certain address um, that have walleye in it. Uh, from there, it'll also show you fishing access points um, along with uh, any fish sanctuaries that may be on that lake so you know to avoid. Um, and then depending on the water body, it'll also show lake depth contours. Uh, it also breaks it down into fishery management zones, so that way you can know what area you are fishing and therefore you can look up uh, the regulations uh, to see if there is a slot size uh, for that species. Having said that, I always make sure I have my fishing license with me um, and I am, in, I am a, a very passionate bass tournament angler. So having said that, I always have to make sure I have a sport license uh, to be able to do that. Um, um, 
And the Fish Online also, you, the minister uses the website uh, to upload its stocked fish species and the numbers along with the size. And it goes back uh, many years as long as they've been using uh, this database. Uh, having said that, I uh, am a full-time fish culture technician for the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources. I've been doing that for almost 11 years now, and coincidentally, uh, walleye is one of the species that I grow and stock across the province for anglers uh, like yourself to go and catch. Um, so having said that, um, I just want to go over uh, all of my gear that I use when I'm going down the water. So first and foremost, uh, now that I do have enough safe ice to set up my hub, I am currently in the Cabela's uh, thermal double wide bottom uh, insulated shelter. I have had this for almost four years now and I absolutely love it. Um, it is super warm um, and it collapses really easily. And the really neat feature that I like about this style of hub, as I have four different style of hubs that I use to target various species throughout the winter, um, when this double wide collapses, it has at least uh, a foot of extra slack in the bag. Um, because at the end of the night, when I'm packing this up and it's got snow and ice on the bottom, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about the zipper breaking. Um, I haven't had any issues that way. It's super durable. Um, all of the windows are open up, they're Velcro strip, um, and all of them can completely open. Um, it has two mesh mesh pieces on the top, so I currently have my, my striker gloves up there uh, as I got them a little moist earlier, just setting everything up, so they're drying. Um, and it's actually, it's actually pretty light uh, and easy to, to carry around if I'm going out early season and I am uh, pulling everything by hand. Um, having said that, I think the next important tool that is essential for ice fishing is uh, an electric auger. So I have been ice fishing since I was a little girl. Um, my dad actually introduced me to fishing through uh, the hard water season as we didn't have a boat growing up. So we started out with a hand auger um, and then from there uh, as I got more into ice fishing, I quickly upgraded to a 10 inch gas auger. And then last year I was using a eight inch pistol bit um, with a brushless head Milwaukee drill on it. And then this year I upgraded to the Strike Master um, 40 volt uh, lithium electric auger. And hands down, this auger is my favorite. It is super light, super quiet, and it's got two LED lights right under the handles there, um, which is handy for nighttime drilling. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's super light, um, you know, compared to the gas auger. I, you know, nothing against gas augers, but um, they are a little bit heavy, noisy, and you know, ultimately, depending on what you're fishing for and what depths they can, spook the fish a little bit, but they ultimately will come back. Um, and then I don't have to deal with gas anymore. So uh, the nice thing is, is having the battery. Um, I just charge that up uh, every night after I use it. Um, I do have an extra battery uh, on hand just, just in case for a backup. Uh, I do have that in an insulated backpack that I uh, carry around with me. But the auger is ultimately one of the most important tools because without it you will not be drilling holes and therefore you will not be catching fish. So I highly recommend uh, checking out the electric augers. Um, from there I want to talk about my lighting. So I picked up these clam um, LED fan lights uh, from Cabela's same year I bought this double wide hut uh, and I absolutely love them they are they have three settings for LED lights and they are USB rechargeable I don't know if you can see them but um, they are USB rechargeable which I absolutely love I don't have to worry about dealing with batteries and I will charge them I think they probably charge for up to four hours and I haven't really kill them and normally when I'm setting up this hub style I am fishing for anywhere from four hours to 12 hours um, and the handy feature with the fan is I can turn that on on two settings and if I want to help 
circulate my heat uh, in the hub. Uh, it's really helpful that way. Um, generally, uh, I do have my heater going when I'm setting this dial up. So I have the Big Buddy heater, um, which is definitely recommended for a hub this size. Um, when I first bought this hub, I was just still using my single uh, Buddy heater that I would use for like my flip over uh, hut, but it uh, definitely um, didn't, didn't heat it as well. So I quickly upgraded to the Big Buddy. Um, and I absolutely love that. Um, from there, some other tools that I use. Um, I do have live bait with me. Um, I was born and raised on fishing live bait. Um, so I make sure I have uh, my, bait, my bait, my minnows in a bucket. And I have my scoop behind me. Um, so I do also, you can also use the minnow net as a backup. Um, in case you do forget your scoop to clear out your holes. Um, from there, um, since we are currently in zone 18, there is a slot size for walleye. And that is you can only keep a walleye that is between 40 centimeters and 50 centimeters. So 15, seven inches to 19, seven inches, anything below or above that you want to release. So I always make sure I have my bump board with me along with uh, a tape measure. Um, so that way I make sure I'm, you know, following, uh, the regulations, uh, from there, uh, I also have my, I have two of these actually, the clam fold up tables. Um, they're, they're super handy, um, and super light. You just clip, unclip them and then they'll all collapse. Um, but like I said, I have various things on them. Always make sure I have my scissors pliers. I absolutely love pliers because I have yet to get a trouble in my hand uh, because of that reason. Um, and then I also have some mouth openers just in case, you know, I get a, feist a feisty pike or a burbot and their jaw locks up. I can quickly and easily remove the trouble and get them on their way. Um, snacks are also very important. Um, I always make sure I have snacks and water with me because ultimately if I'm coming out here I don't want to leave and if I have food and water I have no reason to leave so um, along with uh, I just have some extra lures I have sitting out here um, I'll touch base more on that after um, I also have I brought a couple extra rods with me tonight um, this is the Freedom Tackle uh, Turnback Shad. I always make sure I have more than a couple rods than needed. You just never know what can happen. Um, and this is my Panfish Rod. It is a Fenwick uh, Ultralight uh, setup, but I can also touch base more on that after. Um, Tip-ups. I have always used a tip-up. There are quite a few variety of tip-ups out there nowadays. Um, but this is the Polar, Polar Therm setup. Um, and I absolutely... Uh, love this style of fishing because I had lost a rod down the hole before and I don't want that to happen again um, so you know and there's just something about running for a flag and it's just a different you know way to catch a fish by hand bombing them up the hole and it's absolutely enjoyable so I do always like to have um, you know a tip up not too far outside of my hub uh, while I'm in here uh, vertically jigging. Um, I also have uh, my rod bag. Um, this is the Cabela's um, six piece um, rod bag. Um, you know, you could spend anywhere from um, up to, sorry, I'll just try it. you can spend anywhere from up to, you know, $30 on a rod reel combo to hundreds of dollars on just, just a rod uh, itself. So I always make sure that I have my gear protected, um, especially when I have them, I have an extra rod in here, um, especially when I am using the machine to pull my equipment in the sleigh. I always want to make sure that, you know, I get out to my fishing spot and I don't have any, any broken rods or reels. They also have storage compartments here. I just have some bells and some wine and some tip-up lights some extra items in case 
I need to change line or, you know, I do recommend putting a light on the flag as they are hard to see later at night. Um, extra tackles. I have uh, quite a bit of Freedom Tackle lures, an assortment of turnback shads, uh, Freedom Tackle flashes uh, here as well, which I have one tied on and I will reel up shortly to show you. And then from there, I think I, I also have, uh, this is my current walleye rod. It is a Cabela's uh, Fish Eagle 50. It's a rod and reel combo. Um, it is a 28 inch uh, medium, medium style rod. Um, you know, this is just my preference, um, but you can use, you know, anywhere from a 20, 28 inch medium rod to a 38 inch medium heavy. Um, you know, the walleye in this lake, um, they generally, I think I heard last week that there was a 28 inch walleye caught out here, which is pretty big, um, for this area. And, you know, you get a lot of fish in slot size, uh, and a lot of the, the, the sexually immature fish um so i i haven't personally used like a 30 38 inch uh, medium heavy rod um but i do plan on going to uh, the bay of quinney in a couple weeks for a walleye tournament um and generally those fish average over eight to ten pounds so i'll probably be getting uh, a, a medium heavy rod for that body of water um so i will just reel this up quickly. Um, and I wanted to talk about uh, kind of my setup. So currently I am using uh, the Garmin Panoptics Live Scope. This is the 106 SV model. Um, this unit is fairly new to me. Um, I did get it last winter, mainly for targeting um, uh, basin crappie. Um, but then I put it uh, on our bass boat and we've been using it for um, fishing bass tournaments since then. Um, I absolutely love it. Uh, for electronics, I did start out using uh, a Vexlar FL12, I believe, and I had that for quite a few years. I still still absolutely love it, but having the live scope option is absolutely, it's a huge game changer. Um, you know, currently I am not seeing any fish down there right now, but earlier I was seeing um, some smaller panfish in this area. Um, this view that you see here is currently in down view. Um, so when I got out here earlier today, um, I was using my Navionics app, which is a very helpful app that you can use to search a lake for uh, different depth contours. Um, and generally, um, I was looking for probably about 16 feet of water, um, but I drilled around in this area and to my right on the inside, there's a huge weed line, a huge weed flat. Um, and then right here, I'm kind of in a little, a little fish highway, I'll, I'll call it, um, before it drops off to a little bit deeper water out to my left uh, at about 17 to 20 feet with some boulders. So I kind of chose this spot just to kind of set up uh, in between um, as the walleye will use this area to move up uh, at night into the shallow shallows from the depth from the deeper water um, to ambush their prey um, so I currently have this set uh, in down view um, when I got out here earlier I drilled a hole uh, I, I set it in forward view and I had it set up to 90 feet that it can scan around um, so I was using that just mainly just to locate the weed line and the structure uh, first, but I prefer when I'm actually uh, fishing to have it in the, the downward view personally. Um, so having said that, I am currently using the Freedom Tackle uh, flash. So it's got uh, the blade bait there. Um, and the neat thing about this lure is you can remove the treble hook and then insert your minnow head or your bait and then put the treble hook back on. So that is what I did earlier today. Um, I should mention uh, my line. I do prefer a, a 10 pound uh, braided line. 
uh, tipped with an eight pound floral carbon leader. Uh, again, this is just my preference um, and there are so many different um, styles and techniques on how to target these fish, but that seems to be what has worked for me over the years. Um, and in terms of, I will just show this, my lure dropping down right here to bottom, if you can see that. So generally for walleye techniques, I will drop it down to bottom and I will disturb the bottom ever so slightly just to kind of create like a cloud and a disturbance in the air. And then I'll slowly raise it up off bottom. And sometimes if there's a fish down there, it'll just hammer my bait on the slow rise up. Um, and then from there, I'll just drop it down, lightly hitting bottom and slowly lifting it up about a foot to two feet off bottom. And the nice thing is with this live scope unit is you can see a fish coming in from the sides and then you get a really quick idea on what their behavior is like. Um, so, you know, if they're kind of cruising slowly on bottom, um, maybe they're not aggressively feeding um, compared to there's been many times over the last winter or two that I'll see fish suspended come in and I'll reel up to them right away and they'll just hammer it. Um, so it's really, I've really learned a lot from this unit, um, having, having fished it for about a year and a half now. Um, you can see that I think that's something small there that might just be a really small minnow or uh, a panfish perhaps. Um, causing some disturbance. I mean, I would really love to catch a fish in front of all of you tonight, but that's okay if that doesn't happen because, you know, it's, for me, it's not always about catching fish. Um, you know, I have some of the best uh, days or nights on the water when I don't even catch a fish. Um, it's all about just getting out here and experiencing it and heading back out and doing it all again tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I will leave that set up like that and I will just touch base on my panfish rod again. So this is my ultralight rod. Um, I recently, oh there's a fish down there. <laughs> um, I did start off when I started fishing panfish quite a few years ago. Uh, with a light rod and then I quickly upgraded to an ultralight rod. Um, it is super sensitive. Um, I mainly target uh, black crappie or perch, um, but last winter I did catch like a six pound burbot on this rod and I'm using five pound floral carbon on my entire rod uh, and it didn't break and it was like the best bite I've ever had. Um, but yeah, same, same technique with the perch fishing as well. I'll like generally slowly drop it down towards bottom and, you know, disturb the bottom and bring it up and just lightly jig up that way. But, um, like I said, you know, growing up, I've always known to fish tight to bottom because I didn't have electronics. Uh, but now that I have the live scope unit, I can see fish come, come in suspended, reel up to them, catch them, set the hook. Uh, and send them back on their way. So it's definitely a very useful tool and has taught me a lot about fish behavior and patterns over the years. Um, do we have a question? Let me see. Not yet, but you could ask if there's any questions. Okay. Uh, yeah, do you, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, drop them in the comment section below we have one now pam what's your preference for bait dead or live sorry dead uh, or live minnow my preference would be live i've always used live bait um and generally like with the with the turn back shed i'll i'll either tip uh this lure uh with the head and let let the tail end flutter on the back end 
um, just because it helps create like a natural disturbance for the fish to, to hear. And I mean, naturally, they're probably going to go for swimming live bait as that's what they're actively feeding on uh, below the ice. Um, but the Freedom Flash lure there uh, is the first lure that I've used where I can, I cut the head off a minnow and put it on the shaft of the lure and put the treble back on. So that's why I'm currently using that right now. Um, but uh, if I do feel like switching it up, I will tip uh, any other lure with a, a live bait minnow. And yeah. The next question is, do you overnight in your tent very often? Any tips on, on that if you do? Um, that is one thing that I haven't done yet, uh, is an overnight, uh, winter camping, ice fishing. Uh, I have seen quite a few people, uh, do that over the years and it is on my bucket list, uh, to do one day. Um, but there are like some risks, uh, involved with that. You know, I do know you always want to make sure that you have a CO2 detector with you in case your propane leaks. Um, so that is definitely... Uh, a must safety feature if you are going to look into getting into winter camping while ice fishing. Um, but actually I just seen a really nice setup uh, yesterday of uh, another female angler uh, doing a winter camping by herself and it looked, I really should get a cot and get a sleeping bag and all that because uh, it's, yeah, it's ha something that I haven't done before, but generally I'll fish up till midnight, 1am, depending on how the bite goes. Um, but yeah, I'll, I definitely have to do that in the future. You could see if uh, they wanted to, t if you have any more questions. You're almost at 8.30, but... Okay, perfect. Yeah, I am not seeing any live fish on the screen yet. Um, but yeah, if you have any more questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below. Okay, I've got a couple of questions here. Okay. If you're running and gunning, what is the must-have electronic that you take with you? That is a good question. As when I, I so last winter I was running a nine-inch screen, and then Cabela's actually had a really good sale on right before Christmas, so I upgraded to a ten-inch, and I did weigh it. Um, and this unit here does weigh twenty-five pounds. Um, but for running and gunning, I still prefer this just because. I can just put it in the sleigh and tow it around with me and have the auger and just keep bouncing around um, because the nice thing is like it does it scans up to 300 feet I believe but um, I usually have it set up to 100 feet in front of me so if I drill a hole I can scan and see if there's structure on the bottom because generally I am looking for some sort of uh, structure like boulders or you know rocky points and humps and shoals um, off of islands for walleye or panfish. Um, but the nice thing is, is I can see all of that structure uh, out in front of me and then I can see the fish and go drill a hole and drop on it. So this does save me time for running and gunning, but um, for the most part, yeah, I do generally, I will drill quite a few holes in the daytime and search and move around looking for um, fish. Um, and then compared to setting up at night, I'll find my my stationary spot where I want to set all of that up and stay out for quite a few hours. So, okay. Next question here. If the lakes that you fish or sorry, of the lakes that you fish walleye for, how many of them have ones that you have personally raised and stocked? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so for this area, I have fished two lakes that I have stocked uh, with walleye. Um, and the neat thing about them, uh, most of the walleye are fin clipped um, and along with a lot of our other species that we raise and stock in the province, the majority of them are fin clipped. So you're able to tell that they are a hatchery fish versus the natural fish. Um, but there's not a whole lot of lakes in my area that we stock with walleye. Um, generally I have to travel um, you know, up north or uh, cover different districts uh, to be able to go and target those fish. But um, as far as the local lakes that I actively 
you know, rotate between in a season, they are not stocked with my walleye, unfortunately. Also wanted to mention you have some fans watching and Lindsay says hi. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> and we have another question here. Okay, one sec. Let's say you're only allowed two rods and two lures for targeting walleye. What rods would you bring and what two lures would they be rigged with? That is a good question. Um, honestly, my first choice would be this rod. Um, I actually have two of these um, because I bought these... These are probably my second set of ice rods that I've used, and I've had them for probably 12 or 13 years now. Um, they are a 28-inch medium uh, rod, and I just absolutely love them. You know, thinking back to how many fish I've actually caught on these reels, and how many, or these rods, sorry, and how many species is just, they have a lot of memories behind them. Um, Having said that, for lures, um, I do love to rip a good uh, blade bait. I do have a couple, um, and I do have some in my other tackle tray, but I do love to rip a good blade bait, uh, mainly because it's a super aggressive, uh, loud lure. Um, and generally, I'll just drop that towards bottom. Uh, hammer it off bottom of it and then rip it back up like two or three feet um, and I will generally use that style lure more so in the in the daylight hours um, when the walleye are a bit more finicky to find and I'm moving around um, just because it creates that noise and that disturbance um, along with um, having any lure that glows on top of that I love multiple lures um, that glow um, this one is also a good one it can work uh, for other species as well, but this is the Minnow Flash, um, and it has UV and uh, glow. This is the Pink Tiger. I just like the action of this lure because, um, and even when you use it on the live scope, you can just see it um, fluttering down um, that way. Um, but yeah, I definitely would recommend the Minnow Flash, um, and like yeah, probably... I do like the Freedom Flash too because it's something that I've never seen to be able to remove the treble and to put, um, you know, your minnow head on it. Um, so I think that lure actually would be my new favorite lure for this this winter. Do you have that one rigged? Yep. If you wanna. Yep. I'm currently jigging with it. Now. So that's the Freedom Tackle Flash with the blade bait. So it just when you're jigging it, that just clings against the side of the lure. Um, and then this is Fire Tiger. Uh, it, it also glows. So just having that glow feature and anything that rattles is absolute game changer for walleye, in my opinion. So Got another question. Yep. After using a loud lure like a rattle bait, once perch start to get disinterested, is it better to switch to something more subtle or change to a different bait like a blade bait? Um, if they get disinterested. If they get disinterested, um, first and foremost, like when I have fish come in and they kind of nose my lure and look at it and then kind of swim away, um, I kind of think, hmm, okay, like what did they not like about that presentation? Um, and if I can't actively get fish to bite off of, you know, the loud, aggressive rattles or lures or even the glow, uh, depending, um, sometimes I'll downsize the size of my bait um, just to give them a smaller, more subtle presentation. Um, you know, again, oh, I think that might be something down there, sorry. Um, just to give them a more like you know smaller presentation just to try to get them um you know maybe they um don't have as much energy and they're kind of slowing down for the day and they just want to you know easily uh get um a, an easy quick bite uh bite to eat um so yeah that uh that's what i would do <laughs> so if you want to 
do last call for questions, I guess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, thank you everybody for joining me tonight. Uh, I really appreciate uh, everybody tuning in and I want to thank uh, Cabela's Canada for giving me this opportunity to come at you live from the ice. We have actually two more questions if you don't okay. mind. Yeah. Looks great, Pam. Do you find that the more aggressive ladder presentations turn on fish when they're in a negative mood? Yes, I absolutely agree to that statement. Yes, I think, um, and just having the live scope again, being able to see their behavior in regards to those reaction ra reaction baits. Uh, yes, I absolutely love uh, the, the rattle and I think it just fires them up, um, especially if you see them coming in on the screen um, and they're, you know, actively chasing you, I'll start reeling up too, um, cause you know, walleye will come in suspended. So they don't mind chasing bait. Um, that's what they're doing, uh, when they're trying to get a, a meal down below. So next question, what one piece of equipment would be on your, sorry, what would, what one piece of equipment would be on your must have list that you don't have yet? That I don't have yet. Oh underwater fish camera. It's been on my list uh, for the last couple of years. I, I was recently just looking at the aqua views um, and Jeff and Jason Maddity, they were on a couple weeks ago um, for the Cabela's Outdoor Ed Live video and they were showcasing their new aqua view and it's, I know quite a few people that have them but I don't know why I haven't just made the purchase yet. Um, it's definitely handy for fishing daytime uh, and dropping down and actually getting to see and identify the weeds um, that are below rather than just seeing them on the screen. So I might have to purchase one here in the next few weeks. We'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, if that is it for questions or comments, um, I might wrap this up. Um, but again, thank you everybody for tuning in and thank you Cabela's for giving me the opportunity to host their first ever live seminar from the ice. Uh, and hopefully I'll get to be able to uh, do this again. Um, and I had a lot of fun tonight, so I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, if you, you can keep commenting or if you want to throw a question out there later on, um, I will respond uh, tomorrow. I will be back on to make sure that none of your questions were missed. So again, thank you everybody. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you all go catch some fish this winter and I hope this inspires, you know, the people that have never been ice fishing before to, you know, get into it. It is super fun, super enjoyable and it's just nice to be out here. So thank you all. <laughs>